France mourns the death of deep-sea explorer Paul-Henri Nagelet, who was among the victims of the Ocean Gate tragedy. The head of Russia's Wagner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, publicly contradicts Putin's justification for war with Ukraine. No breakthrough between Kosovo and Serbia as EU chief. Joseph Beret holds separate crisis talk sessions in Brussels. The EU warns Twitter's Elon Musk about content moderation ahead of the introduction of the Digital Services Act. The prospect for recovering the remains of five passengers on board the Titanic-bound submersible that's likely imploded in the North Atlantic are uncertain. But for now, the US Coast Guard says rescue workers will continue to work to find them. This is an incredibly unforgiving uh, environment down there uh, on the seafloor. Uh, and uh, the debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion of uh, the vessel. And so uh, we'll continue to uh, work and continue to uh, search uh, the area uh, down there, but uh, I, I don't have an answer for uh, prospects at this time. American media says a U.S. Navy top-secret instrument designed to detect and monitor submarines had recorded an acoustic signal suspected to be the Titan's implosion on Sunday, the day of its disappearance. The Titan's passengers were British billionaire Hamish Harding, two members, a father and son of one of Pakistan's wealthiest families, oceanographer David Mearns and French shipwreck expert Paul-Henri Nargelet. While the Ocean Gate tragedy resonates around the world, it's felt particularly in France. Frenchman Paul-Henri Nagelet, who was on board the vessel, was one of the world's top experts in underwater exploration. He began his career as an officer in the French Navy, rising to a commander of a deep-sea intervention submarine unit. From there, he moved to maritime archaeology, piloting many dives to the Titanic from 1987. His pioneering work was a big influence for director James Cameron ahead of filming for Titanic. It was the beginning of a long relationship between the two men. Nargelet was director of underwater research for EM Group and RMS Titanic Inc., the company that owns the salvage rights to the Titanic shipwreck. In that capacity, he supervised the recovery of some 5,000 artefacts from the site of the wreck. His enthusiasm was evidently undimmed as he signed up for the fateful trip on the Ocean Gate sub. Colleagues said he would have been aware of the risks. The head of the Wagner mercenary group has said Ukraine never threatened to attack Russia, contradicting Putin's justification of war. Yevgeny Prigozhin's statement will dramatically increase tensions with Russian military chiefs. Сейчас уже Министерство обороны пытается обмануть общественность, пытается обмануть президента и рассказать историю о том, что со стороны Украины была безумная агрессия, и они собирались вместе со всем блоком НАТО на нас напасть. Поэтому спецоперация, так называемая 24 февраля, она была начата совершенно по другим причинам. Prigozhin has relentlessly criticized rival Russian commanders over their handling of the war in an internal struggle for power and influence within the Kremlin. But until now, he's never undermined Moscow's justification for going to war. The UN has placed Russia on the list of those most responsible for the deaths of children in conflict. Russian forces have been accused of killing at least 136 minors since invading its neighbor. 
A new document also points out flaws of Ukraine's forces. The Security Council is not only no longer representative of the world, it is often paralyzed, as it is the case in the war in Ukraine. And even the various groups and platforms outside the multilateral system, such as G20, are caught up in these divisions. The world cannot go on like this. In the U.S., India's Prime Minister assured President Biden that his country is ready to help bring peace to Ukraine. With the Ukraine conflict, war has returned to Europe. It is causing great pain in the region. Since it involves major powers, the outcomes are severe. The global order is based on the respect for the principle of the UN Charter. Peaceful resolution of disputes and respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity. Back on the battlefield, Ukraine has accused Moscow of creating groups to remove and hide the bodies of the dead in the Kherson region. It says Russia is doing this to destroy evidence and traces of their crimes in the occupied territory. It's a year since the EU granted Ukraine formal membership candidate status. It was a highly symbolic moment and, coming four months after Russia's invasion, a huge boost to national morale. For the latest on the country's membership hopes, Euronews spoke to Olga Stefanishna, Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration. As our colleague Neil O'Reilly reminds us, a year ago no one thought the war would drag on this long and the initial timetable may be out of date. With six months to go, is that still realistic? The work has been started and some of the decisions are only technically to be adopted uh, within the next months. I think that the chances for political decisions are really high because uh, uh, there is uh, not a single sign of hesitation that Ukraine commitment is there and that Ukraine is anyhow can let the partners down in that regard. Ukraine also expects a lot from NATO and the approaching summit in Vilnius in July, where they'll discuss Ukraine's future. The alliance leaders have already ruled out Kyiv joining the club at the summit, but are determined to strengthen cooperation. We need uh, to, uh, to have this unity preserved and this uh, strategic clarity for Ukraine preserved and cherished uh, for our people. And you can rest assured that Anything uh, which could be concerning for us following the Vilnius summit uh, will not lead to thinking that Ukraine is weak, Ukraine is, not, is ready. It would be a signal that uh, the democratic world is now ready to take the decisions. The Prime Minister of Kosovo and the Serbian President were in Brussels at the request of the EU's head of diplomacy. Hoping to end weeks of violence in the predominantly Serb areas of northern Kosovo, Josip Bure met Alban Kurti and Alexander Vucic separately, since the pair refused to engage in talks with one another. The top EU diplomat was unable to ease border tensions, but has assured that both sides agree on early elections. I've been putting on the table concrete proposals based on the mentioned conditions of the European Union. And a list in this context, we agreed on the need for new elections and discussed in detail the modalities and the steps on how to get there. We are still not there, but at least we know how to proceed. Much and have a the EU is urging Kosovo and Serbia to return to the negotiating table. Violence flared in northern Kosovo last month after ethnic Albanian mayors took office and the tensions worsened after Serbian police arrested three Kosovo policemen last week. The EU has taken a warning on content moderation to Twitter's HQ in San Francisco ahead of the introduction of the Digital Service Act. It requires tech platforms to have enough resources to moderate dangerous content. Internal Market Commissioner Thierry Breton had talks with executives and Elon Musk, who joined via video link. My mission is just to make sure that 
as of August 25th, they will respect the law or they will not be able to continue to operate in Europe. And they all want to go back to Europe. Breton will also discuss the new regulations with Meta's Mark Zuckerberg. And although Musk has loosened Twitter's internal content rules, he suggests that he will comply with the act. But tech firms will likely have to invest heavily to create compliance teams at a time when they're cutting staff numbers worldwide. Beekeepers in the U.S. are being forced to reinvent themselves. According to an annual study, they have lost nearly half of their colonies, the second highest mortality rate on record. But they are overcoming the difficulties by using costly measures to create new colonies, such as buying queens and unfolding hives. As a result, numbers have remained relatively stable. Bees, which die mostly due to parasites, pesticides, starvation and climate change, are a crucial link in the food chain. Syria has unveiled new parts of an intact Roman-era mosaic in the town of Rastin, near Homs. There are some damaged parts, but the scenes are well preserved. Among them is a portrait of ancient Amazon warriors from Roman mythology. For Syrian authorities, this is the most important archaeological discovery in the past 11 years. The archaeological work, which started last year, has been hampered by sanctions imposed on the country.